Good afternoon, everyone. Explosive eruption expected for Kilauea later on in the week. We've seen the fountains grow from 150 to 250 feet, lava spilling into the lagoon. We've seen Kilauea start to slip and enlarge with cracks. Now the entire conduit completely blocked. Expecting a steam eruption far larger and higher velocity than the last eruption. And looking at these quakes, they look rather evenly spaced. So should we expect another quake in the next day or two? Media is desperately trying to get you to believe that Kilauea Fuego and Merapi are not related in any way, shape, or form with the eruptions. Good morning everyone, this is the HVO Kilauea update for June 4th. Starting in the Lower East Rift Zone, as of 10.30 p.m. last night, the front of the Fisher 8 lava flow had entered the ocean at Kapoho. Lays, lava haze, and steam explosions are expected, as with the Fisher 18 ocean entry. You can't dribble stamp a double stamp. You can't dribble stamp a double stamp, Lord. You can't dribble stamp a double stamp. Lord, Lord. Big Island, about a dozen people who ignored evacuation orders are now surrounded by flowing lava. Their only way out will be by helicopter. Carter Evans has a view of the danger from above. That is a huge, huge lava front there, just consuming everything in its path. Massive amounts of molten rock and unstoppable force of nature. Fissure 8 remains active with a vigorous lava fountain up to heights of 220 feet and a wide perched lava channel. Small outbreaks of lava should be expected along the length of the channel and we are currently checking, tracking a breakout north of the Kapoho cinder pit near the intersection of cinder and railroad. Uh, currently, the lava flows have covered about 19.9 .9 square kilometers, which is roughly 7.7 .7 square miles or 4,917 acres of land. At the summit, an explosion from the Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater at about 3.50 p.m. yesterday registered as a magnitude 5.5 earthquake and produced an ash plume to an estimated height of 8,000 feet. Continued crater collapses and explosions, some registering as earthquakes, ash plumes and degassing should be expected at the summit. Thank you. Summit. We have recorded no major explosions, large plumes over the past day. There have, however, been a lot of earthquakes. In fact, we recorded 500 over the past 24 hours, which is the highest rate ever measured there. The, um, otherwise, the summit activity is, is rather quiet in terms of the plumes, and the ash advisory has actually um, been uh, lifted as of 11 a.m. this morning. Hi there. Aloha. Thanks for doing this. Brian Shiro, you mentioned there were many earthquakes, 500 over the past 24 hours, the highest rate ever measured. Is that only in the lower east Rift zone, or does that include what's happening up at this area? Morning, Sherry. That number is tallied just for the summit area, Kilauea. So that, oh, okay, that sorry. remarkable activity, yes, over the past uh, several days, um, including yesterday, has been high at the summit. Just following up on those earthquakes as well, um, what are the implications of the highest level being recorded in those 500 quakes? Well, the, we think the cause of these earthquakes is continued deflation of the summit from the evacuation of magma under Halima'oma'u crater. Now, the, the effects of this um, are mostly felt in the immediate area, people in Volcano Village um, and in a national park, of course. Um, of course, another effect that's and on us is that the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory building itself was damaged and forced us to leave that. So um, the, the damage can be quite intense close in, um, but farther out, it's, 
it's not having widespread effects. I actually what I was getting at is yesterday we were talking about the activity at the summit, whether there was a idea of something actually was building greater pressure there or it was sort of a slowing that was happening and we might have seen the last of our big steam explosions and our steam explosions up there. Um, do the 500 earthquakes imply either one? Is it, does it give you any more hints to what's happening? Well, this, this pattern of increased earthquake activity really um, started around May 4th, and it's, it's gone up and down um, different times as the pressure has changed in that system. Since around May 27th, we have seen a change in the behavior where um, these uh, steam and ash eruptions are somewhat less uh, regular, and um, the earthquakes are actually building more. And um, we're interpreting this currently as, as you heard yesterday, as, as rubble and material that's collapsed in from the walls is, is choking the conduit and, um, in, in a sense, suppressing some of the um, explosions. But when the explosions do eventually get out, they potentially could be larger. And, of course, the last three that we had were the largest yet in terms of energy release, the ones associated with the magnitude 5.3 and 5.3 as well as 5.4 earthquakes. Now, um, what will happen next? I don't have a crystal ball for sure, but but um, the system currently is in that state, and, and we could expect another one any time. This is really something I've been trying to wrap my head around for a very long time. Um, in 1924, from the USGS page, it says, quote, Holly Mau Mau more than doubled in size. Holly Mau Mau grew during the eruption as well as the wall collapsed and its bottom dropped out and it doubled in diameter. Um, now, unquote. Now, now that means that the, the crater itself doubled in size and, and, and right now we've seen the bottom fall out, but we haven't really, we haven't seen Holly Mau Mau, the crater prime exactly get larger. Is that something that could happen with the, with the, with the bottom being capped and you know, this also goes back to a, a part on the on the USGH 1924 page that says that uh, the first explosions were never seen nor heard from May 9th to the 10th. So, how confident um, is the USGS that the activity wasn't ramping up before May 9th, 1924, and that maybe what we're going through right now could have been the ramp up process we were seeing leading up to a much larger explosion at Holly Mau Mau. Hi, this is Brian from the USGS. Thank you for your question. So you're correct that the scenario we have now has many parallels to 1924. It doesn't mean the volcano is going to follow the same script necessarily, but um, at least it's a, a close guide for us. And um, like 1924, there, there definitely could be larger um, eruptions to come from the summit. We are preparing for that and, and watching for that. Now, in terms of expanding of the Halima'umau crater, uh, that's already happening. Pieces are falling off from the walls. It is, um, you can see it in, in aerial imagery from our drones. You can see it from radar imagery from space. Um, and uh, it's already gotten larger from this eruption. And there's evidence of slumping along the, uh, I believe, the northwestern side where we may expect another uh, collapse to happen. And this type of uh, expansion of the crater itself seems to have really um, taken off, again, starting after May 27th, 28th, in that time frame, when uh, the energy of these explosions correspondingly has increased. So um, I think that is a reflection in part that, that they're actually um, removing parts of, of that crater rim as, as they um, release that energy. So is it going to build up to another big one? We don't know, but we certainly have that possibility.